In previous videos, we've discussed the deep front line and how when it's active, you're able to move within your center of gravity and keep load evenly distributed across your entire body. We also discussed that when your DFL isn't active and when it's weak and dysfunctional, how load can get stuck in specific joints, such as in the case of OP, your hips and adductors, which can lead to dysfunction and pain. What I want to discuss now is a really important concept that underpins all good human movement and really is the core of you fixing your OP. And it's a concept I like to describe as center of gravity math. Now, your center of gravity, that line that goes straight through your center, it makes sense, it's pretty easy to understand. If you have all your joints stacked on top of each other, like a column, that load is gonna distribute evenly through your entire body. And if you start pulling these joints out of alignment, well then you're gonna end up with extra pressure in certain specific places where they've been pulled away. You're gonna break at the bends. But how do you apply your center of gravity when you're moving? When you have to bend or you have to twist or you have to turn? And that's where center of gravity math comes in. Every time you shift a major joint in your body, you need to counterbalance it by moving another joint in the opposite direction. You have to accommodate for the movements that are occurring in each part of your body. Remember that your center of gravity, your deep front line, is an interconnected web. So it's gonna try and dissipate load. If one area shifts in one direction, it's gonna try and dissipate load by balancing out by moving another area of your body in the other direction. Let's analyze this concept of center of gravity math by having a look at different squat patterns. So in a good squat, we should be seeing really good center of gravity math. So let's have a look at our little squatter here on the side. So you can see here, I've drawn up some angles through here. And essentially what you have is a perfect alignment of your center of gravity math when you're moving. So our little model here, as she's drawn her knees forward, her hips have gone down to counterbalance this movement. And her chest is then coming down to counterbalance this movement. She's in perfect balance and perfect center of gravity because every joint is moving in conjunction with each other. She's kept her spine nice and straight so that there's no overload in the lower back areas and there's no bending through here. And she's just a bunch of straight lines that have been perfectly counterbalanced with each other. And that's why we can draw this nice angle up through here. And we know that in this posture, she's gonna be really advantaging her glutes and everything is going, the load and flow of weight is gonna go straight through her body from her toes all the way back to her head and back again. And no area is gonna get stuck and overloaded. Now, if we have a look at our poor little squatter on the side here, on this side, the opposite is happening. Now, her bum is not going out, so it's not gonna be engaged as strongly. Her knees are shoving forward, so she's gonna be overloading her quads, and in the case of OP, going to be really overloading their adductors and that's going to create a lot of issues and pressure as well. The back is rounding so now all of a sudden you're going to have pressure in these segments of the lower back because the load can't go in a straight line like it is in our good squatter down to our glutes so the lower back muscles are going to start engaging and taking load as well. Essentially we've got a recipe for disaster and injury in this little squatter because the load is not gonna be distributed evenly and straight through head to toe. It's gonna to get stuck in joints and those joints over time are gonna break. And this is the importance of center of gravity math. You've gotta get your center of gravity nice and even so load can flow evenly. Otherwise, you're gonna suffer the consequences of load being shunted into individual joints and those joints then breaking. So center of gravity math brings up a really interesting scenario here of chicken and the egg. When you move within your center of gravity, you activate your deep front line, which allows your glutes and your core and everything to get active and hold you in good alignment. But when you're in bad alignment, it's really hard to activate your six functional systems and activate your deep front line. They're just simply not in the right position to turn on. So it's really hard to know exactly how and when to activate your deep front line. And the key to this is exercise technique. If you start a movement in good alignment, well then you're gonna be able to switch on your deep front line and continue the movement in good alignment. Technique is the key here. If you understand what your center of gravity is, if you can understand what center of gravity math is for each exercise, where your hips and where your bum needs to be for a squat and a deadlift, well then you're gonna be able to apply it and understand what muscles should be turning on when to perform the exercise correctly. And most importantly, as you do this in each exercise, you're gonna be conditioning into your body the correct center of gravity of math. 
how and when each joint should move to counterbalance each other and ensure that your body is active and stable within your deep front line, preventing load from being excessively put into specific joints, such as in the case of OP, your adductors.